As Theodore Vail noted, real difficulties can be overcome. It's only the imaginary ones that are uncomfortable. The reason that I love that is because it is a powerful reminder. At the end of the day, you're choosing what to believe. At the end of the day, all those things in your head that seem like you could never get over them, you've made them up. You've decided to obsessively focus on those things. And as Oprah said, what we dwell on is who we become. And think about that for a second. Think about today, just audit your thoughts. What did you spend your time thinking on? Did you obsessively think about the way that things could go right? Or did you obsessively think about the things that could go wrong? All the myriad ways that you need to protect yourself. And that's how it feels. In the moment, you think, I'm just planning for the worst case scenario. I'm thinking through all the ways that something could go wrong so that I can be prepared for it. Not understanding that what you're doing is focusing on all the ways that it could go wrong. They're imagined futures. They are not real. And in that, like a race car driver, goes where the eyes go. You will go where your thoughts go. You will become your thoughts. So instead of boxing yourself in and thinking only about all the different ways that something could be bad, could break, could fall to pieces. Think about all the things that you could do if you take the action. All the myriad ways that things could come to your aid and work out for the better. Obsessively think on that and let failure be a total surprise in that. You will take the actions that you need to be successful. But first, you've got to train yourself to obsess over all the ways your life could go right. From there, you'll act. You gotta put your whole self in, right? You gotta cut off the cell phone. You got it, no TV. There were those of you who were watching the game last night, you really didn't have no business watching these boys win a national title, going to the NBA, making millions. You didn't have no business watching them because you're not where you need to be. Right? Some of y'all don't have no business watching the basketball game because you're not where you need to be. If you put your whole self in and got a 1.5, I'm loving you. Two, three years from now, that 1.5 is going to turn into a 2.5. You're going to be all right. I know from personal experience. So we got three weeks. I need all televisions off. I need cell phones off. Listen to me. Some of you are going to be broke for the rest of your life because of that little thing on, on, on the side. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life because of a little cell phone. And so you got three weeks. I need you to study like you've never studied before. I need you up all night long studying. You hear me say this all the time. For some of you, this is it. You've heard me say it before. You play games when you come here because you got gear on. But you know where you're from in Detroit. You know where you're from in Flint. You know where you're from in Saginaw. And you know your parents are broke. You know some of you got about seven, eight folks living in one house. And it ain't no real room for you when you go back. This is your opportunity to blow up. But we know the reality for some of us where we live. And our parents don't have no money. And they taking out loans, working two or three jobs for you while you up here playing. Listen to me, I need you to put your whole self in for the next three weeks, but you got it. And even you say, Eric, look, man, you don't understand. If I put everything in, I'm still gonna get a 1.0. I'm telling you to do it anyway. Because, you know, I told you I flunked English three times like a little basic one. So listen to me, I need you to give 120% these last few weeks. All right, don't go home. Wherever you're from, don't go home. This is your home now. All right, listen and listen well because no truer words are ever going to be spoken. You can do anything you want without limitation, whatever it is that you decide you want to make come true in your life, you can do that. It is gonna take an inhuman amount of work. You're gonna to have to be prepared to break yourself in half. You are going to have to learn more than anyone has ever learned. You're gonna to have to push yourself harder than anyone has ever asked you to push yourself before. You're gonna go way beyond your breaking point. You're gonna run until you vomit. You're gonna study until you fall asleep. You're going to push and push and push, and then you're gonna push some 
more. And when you hit the limit, you're gonna push again beyond that. You're gonna force yourself into an adaptation response. And why? Because as Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So if you don't put the work in today, if you don't do the unending, back-breaking work of developing yourself into something greater, the world is gonna pass you by. The people that are going to own it are gonna be the ones that did that work. And the one promise that I can make you right now is that somebody, somebody out there is outworking you. Somebody right now is doing the things that I'm saying. Somebody right now is doing the work of failing and getting up and getting better and pushing themselves and triggering that glorious adaptation response that makes humans the apex predator. Someone right now, they're putting in that work. And if you don't, the future is gonna belong to them. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. It's not okay to make excuses. It's not gonna slow people down. It's not okay to ask the world to stop so that you can step out front. It's not okay to expect little of yourself and demand great rewards. The only thing that's okay is to be in line with the way that the world really works. And if you want to be great, you've gotta become capable of greatness. You've got to develop your skill set. You've got to take what you have now, and if that's crawling, then crawl. But you drag yourself ever forward to a vision of yourself that is so clear and so specific that nothing could knock you off your path because you, my friend, know exactly where you're going. You're willing to pay whatever price it takes to get there. And no matter what anybody says, no matter how many hecklers come for you, no matter how many people try to throw dirt on you, try to stop you, try to knock you down, no matter how many people come for you at night while you sleep, you will rise and you will keep pushing forward and you will get better every day. And no matter how many times people chop at you, knock you down, knock you off the path, you will get back on. You will crawl till you can walk, you will walk till you run, and then you will run until you fly. And that, my friends, is the only path forward. So if you want a future that makes you happy, if you want a world that you're excited about, get your ass out there and earn it. Give me the book bro, back. Take the book. Hey, bro, it's my chicken, bro. What's up? Chicken. Kind of for me. Justin, Justin, what what is you doing, man? What is up? Out of show? Ah, what is you doing, I'm bro? Just, I'm just playing. I ain't robbing y'all. Bro, you was not playing. Y'all thought I was bro. for real. Y'all know me be bro, joking and stuff. What with man. the job, man? Man, I, I ain't got no job, bro. man. Why well, you should have stayed in school, bro, man? Got your education, man. Can't be mess with you, man. You out here robbing people, man. Cool off Stupid, you, man. man. For real, man. It's like hey, man. That. Stay up, though, bro. It's Stay like up. that. As Derek Jeter said, there may be people who have more talent than you, but there's no excuse for anyone to work harder than you do. At the end of the day, whether you believe in talent or not is completely irrelevant. Everyone should believe in hard work. Everything in your life is literally a result of that. You're born an infant, a lump of flesh that can't even hold its own head up. And yet somehow, by practicing, by learning, by growing, you're able to get better. You're literally incapable of anything when you're born. Every skill that you have in your life, all the things that you take for granted, at one point you couldn't do them. So understanding that humans truly are an adaptation machine and that they are capable of acquiring any skill that they want, but it requires hard work. It requires that you do the reps. It requires that you put in the effort. And at the end of the day, the people that you're going to surpass are not gonna be the people that have less talent than you. Maybe they even have more talent than you. It's gonna be the people that you're willing to outwork. But until you're willing to outwork them, you're always going to be stuck. And as John Irving said, to do anything really well, you have to overextend yourself. And that's the key. If you want to put in an extraordinary performance, if you want to absolutely dazzle people, then you have to do something amazing. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. You have to be willing 
to do things that other people think are gonna break you, that other people simply believe there's no way that you could be able to pull that off, that the human animal just is not capable of the lengths to which you are professing to go. And when you profess it, you have to be willing to back it up and you have to put yourself on that march knowing in no uncertain terms, under no circumstances, and for no reason whatsoever would you ever be willing to back down. And when you go in with that level of certainty, then and only then are you actually gonna be able to pull this off. And as Billie Jean King said, champions keep playing until they get it right. Fatigue will literally chip away at your will to win. It is the thing inside of your mind, that weak voice that tells you that you're not gonna be able to make it. The weak voice that begs you to stop and the weak voice that promises safety and security if you would just quit. And here's the worst part about that, it's right. If you quit right now, if you stop, just sit down, relax. You're not at risk anymore. You're not at risk of embarrassment. You're not at risk of failure. But you're also not at risk of greatness. And if you really want to achieve something, you've got to find ways to put yourself at risk of something great happening. You've got to put yourself at risk of overextending yourself. You've got to be willing to face that you may die, that you may actually fall. And here's the thing, for the people that dismiss that, that say they would never put themselves in that situation, then you have limits. And make no mistake, those limits are self-placed. And for the people that are willing to push that, for people that are willing to go beyond that, for people who understand there are things in this world that they're prepared to die for, and it is the thing that they put at the center of their life, it is the thing that they are living for, but they're not gonna stop, and they understand that where the human mind thinks it will break is far short of where it will actually break. But before you can find that point, you've gotta be willing to push yourself. You've gotta be willing to go harder and farther than anybody thinks is reasonable or sensible. That's the path. And so the question is, can you be thought a fool? The question is, do you believe in something so much that you would put yourself at risk like that? The question is, can you face down everyone, including the weak voice inside of your own mind, to make the world come true that you wanna see come true? because at the end of the day, nobody's gonna do it for you. So if you're a champion, keep going until it's done. What would amazing look like for you? What would amazing look like if you were amazing? If you know what amazing looks like, then why haven't you gotten there yet? I want you to say, the reason I'm not as amazing yet because I hit the snooze button. That's why I'm not amazing right now. The reason why I'm not amazing right now is because I couldn't get up early enough because I told myself I'm not an early person. I don't get on Twitter every blue moon. I don't get on my app every blue moon. The reason why some of you will never be successful because you're not immersed in it. When you wake up in the morning, look at your goals. Your goals gonna tell you what time to get up. Are you hearing me? Your goals gonna tell you who you should be hanging out with. I can't tell you, but your goals gonna tell you how much sleep do you need. You might not need to get up at three o'clock in the morning for your goals, but your goals are going to define what time you get up, how you live your life, how you move, when you say yes, when you say no. Think like the person you intend to become. I want your dream to be so clear, so vivid. Right? That when you wake up in the morning, all you got to do is step in your dream. The difference between people who talk about it and people who do it is one simple word, application. They hear it, and they don't just hear it, they digest it. And when they digest it, boom, they do something with it. If you are alive, I know you ain't reached your best yet, right? You got more. You can do more. You can see more. You can be more. I know that all your energy, all your strength, all your skills, all your capabilities, like, you're not operating on a thousand percent. I know there's still some things you can do, some limits that you can push, some buttons you can push, some opportunities that you haven't explored. And the second thing I know is this. I know that you are not experiencing life to its fullest. Like life itself, is a process of becoming, a part of man's ongoing historical drive to manifest his consciousness outside of his mind, in front of his eyes. 
Greatness is when we overcome our own boundaries, when we surprise ourselves. When mapped out, when we get the long view, when we get the big picture. That's greatness. Ask not what the world needs, ask instead what makes you come alive, because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. What makes you come alive? What gives you the goosebumps? What gives you the chills? What makes you well up? Somewhere deep inside, you know what kind of person you were designed to be. Ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? Greatness is upon you, and it's time for you to bring that thing out. There is power in consistency. There is power in doing something over and over and over and over again. There is power in practice. Don't rush the process. Yeah, feel me. Some of y'all trying to rush the 21 days. It takes 21 years to be 21 years old. Don't rush the process. Trust the process. It's a matter of life and death. Yes, it's a job you don't want, but that job is going to propel you and position you for the next job. It's not just the class. It's the rest of your life. Are you hearing me? It's not just working out. It's an extra year on your life. It's not just eating right. It's another seven years on your life. It's a matter of life and death. And so your life is in your hands. Your dream is in your hand. Your future is in your hands. Discipline is a, is a pathway to creativity. The most important variable in behavior change is forcing yourself to behave differently than you feel. One thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a big part of success is just not being lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not gonna feel perfect every day. Cause there's a lot of days I don't wanna do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. That you, you get, there's gotta be those days you push through. And they're, they're probably gonna be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that that through discipline I get things done I always tell my I always say that I'm like the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it but I always do separates people from success and not being successful I've never met a person who was not successful that didn't have a great amount of self-discipline within their life uh, Self-discipline and being able to perform and being able to keep your life on schedule and being able to keep commitments and promises and meet deadlines is essential to success. You develop the discipline, you know, the discipline and I talk about that all the time, you know, the, the fact that discipline equals freedom and the more discipline you have as a human, the more freedom you're going to have, which is completely counterintuitive, you know, people think, oh, you're living this disciplined lifestyle, so that means you, you, you don't have any freedom, and it's actually the exact opposite. I have freedom because I have discipline. I have, I have, you know, financial freedom because I have financial discipline. I have more time i have more time because i have the discipline to get up in the morning you know mm. before most normal people get up those are the kind of disciplines that you put into place and those definitely get instilled through the military get a pad and paper and write down one or two things that you're going to commit to doing every single day no matter what you're gonna you're gonna use that motivation to build a machine for yourself I'm gonna write in my journal every single day I'll write a full page in my journal every single day you become a machine you don't think about whether you're going to write in your journal or not you do it because you already made that commitment every single day no matter what it does not matter if both of your hands were cut off and you have to use your freaking mouth with a pen and write in your journal you write in your freaking journal every single day you don't think about it when you have built a habit
habit. It's ingrained in your nervous system in such a way that the brain doesn't even have to consider whether or not it'll get done. It just gets done because you committed. Commit once. Commit once. You don't need to commit more than once. You commit once to the thing that you're going to do and then you do it every single day. That everyday method is, the, is one of the most powerful methods for reconstructing your entire life. Picking something, one thing. I can't emphasize this enough, how important it is for you to commit to small things on a daily basis because that is what transforms you. It's those tiny little actions. It's not the grand visions. It's the tiny actions that move towards a worthy ideal. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Wherever you are right now listening to this, I want you to burn that into your mind. The most powerful weapon that you're going to have at your disposal isn't a gun, it isn't a sword, it isn't a bomb. The most powerful weapon you will ever have at your disposal, if you really want to make change, is knowledge. It doesn't mean going to school. It can be school, it can be books, it can be a mentor, it can be somebody else's failure, it can be your own failure. But whatever it is, to always be learning, to be learning something today, knowing that that's an investment. And as Robert Louis Stevenson said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but rather by the seeds you plant. And that's what knowledge is. That's what the learning process is, is you're learning something today that you may not even understand how it's going to be valuable. But one day, that piece of knowledge is gonna to come to your aid one day. That thing that you learned is gonna be something that you're gonna lean on one day. That thing that you've worked your ass off to understand better than anybody else in the world. It's going to help you change the world. But you have to be doing it now. You have to be learning with an obsession. You have to understand that ideas in equal ideas out and that you have to chase that knowledge down, that it is a relentless pursuit and that like you would build an armada, like you would create a stockpile of weapons, you must create a stockpile of knowledge. You must learn and learn and learn and you must hold yourself accountable every day to planting those seeds, to getting better, to learning more, to understanding things more broadly. When you do that, there will be nothing that won't be unlocked to you. And that's what I want you guys to understand. It doesn't matter where you are now. It doesn't matter where you started, your circumstances, the money, the people that you know, none of it matters. What matters is how much are you willing to learn? How good are you willing to get? How much knowledge are you willing to soak in? Because that will become your weapon. That will be how you rise up and that will be the thing that will protect you when you need it most. If you want to do something incredible tomorrow, learn today. Being a student, I know how it feels. You get home from a long, stressful day at school, and all you want to do is get in your warm pajamas, lay in your comfortable bed, and watch Netflix all day. But instead, you got three papers, two tests, two projects, and some worksheets staring right back at you. You're tired, overwhelmed, and you feel unmotivated. You try to push yourself to just start and do the work, but that lazy voice in your head is telling you to take a break, telling you to do it later, and it's winning. When you're in that situation, realize that you only have two choices. Either you do it, or you don't. Even with all the complaining, the procrastination and frustration going on, those are the only choices you have. So either you can be on your phone all day, go to parties, watch TV, or you can do the actual work and accomplish your goals.
90 percent of it is just showing up get there and start working like you're not gonna feel perfect every day it's got to be those days you push through and they're they're probably gonna be more numerous than the days you don't and so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done Write down everything you want to do. This is what I want you to do. Write down what you would like to fix about your life. And then just, if you're 30 pounds overweight, you want to lose 30 pounds, do it the right way. Go start eating vegetables, monitor your calories, write down what you eat, exercise every day, force yourself to do it. The brain is the general, the troops are the body, and you get up and you do it. And then you get to write it down. Our bodies, for whatever reason, uh, most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. It's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life, a lot of those are connected to discomfort. Like discomfort is your friend. It really is. Like discomfort and, uh, and not being happy and content with certain situations in life or certain feelings in life. One of the big problems is sitting down and doing the work. And he labels it like an enemy, he calls it resistance, mm -hmm. you know, and that you have to sit down, you have to overcome resistance and that the pro goes to work. And it doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter if you have kids, it doesn't matter what you, you're a pro and you go to work and that, and that just, it puts it in your head that this is what I do. You have pride in that, and then when you are in front of that keyboard, and you're you're you got you look down the count. It says put a thousand words in you, you know, yeah. and you you you're doing the work, yeah. and out of that work, gems blossom. And it's about resistance that people feel when uh, you know you should write, or you know you should paint, or whatever you should sculpt, whatever these things are that you you pursue, and that there's this thing that comes up that tries to keep you from doing that. This resistance. And he's like, this is a battle that you will fight for the rest of your life. But the key is to fight it, not to give in. Don't give in to that resistance. To fight, Just to fight that resistance. And in doing so, every day you do so, you have won the battle for that day. And you will continue to fight that battle. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on what you're doing, on the goal that you want to reach. You've got to sell yourself every day, every day, every day. According to your level of belief, it will manifest itself in what you're doing. Whatever we have right now, whatever we're demonstrating in our lives, is a result of what we believe subconsciously that we deserve. And part of increasing that belief level is that you have got to convince yourself every day. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet, and it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter about the things that you've done that you feel guilty about. If you wouldn't do it today, you're convicting an innocent person. And I'm going to be dead honest with myself because I'm realizing this is not going to last forever. And I'm going to get myself in shape and I'm going to eat healthy. And I'm going to do this because this is, this is me now. I decide that this is me. And people have to realize that you are not your past. You are not all oh, the yeah. times you f***ed up. You're not all the times you were drunk. That's not you. What you, you are the person who's learned from a great deal of experience. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you.